What's up YouTube, it's bringing a quick video, coming at you guys with another first impressions video. We don't have a box for this one, so you guys uh, don't have to uh, deal with having to look at the box. Uh, this is a fragrance that I got in a haul uh, from my friend Connie out there, so I know he's a new subscriber, so if he's watching, thanks again for the stellar prices, Connie. He hit me up with some, with some great prices on uh some fragrances some some niche fragrances uh speaking of niche fragrances this is from a independent niche house called rook perfumes uh they are uk niche house and they're created back in 2018 uh the owner of the company i believe is called uh her name is nadine crow i believe she has the nose for all these fragrances as well so uh, i've never heard of this uh house before they're called rook fragrances or rook perfumes and today we're going to discuss, or we're going to do a first impressions video of their fragrance called Undergrowth. And so, uh, again, I don't know anything about this fragrance or about the house, just that they're from the UK. And I, I do know that this is also a 2020 version. The, the, the original Undergrowth came out in 2018, and I, I'm guessing it's reformulated. I did look, I did compare the notes. I'll get to that in a minute, but there was a couple of notes that were missing from the 2018 version versus the 2020 version. So not sure if this is a better stronger version or if this is a lesser version of the original usually it's the it's the uh it gets lighter because the original was too strong or whatever and they they you know they want to i guess cut some corners and save some money uh and not put so much uh concentration in there but i, I i'm just saying I, I don't have a uh the other sample to compare it to so i guess i couldn't tell you uh this is a unisex green earthy fragrance release in 2020 the nose by this fragrance is nadine crow like i mentioned before uh and here are the notes for this fragrance in the top we have mint and grass in the mid we have green notes um soil tincture uh and mandarin orange and the base run things off with vetiver patchouli and white musk um some of the notes that was shared by the 2018 version are going to be the uh, or there was not green notes in the 2018 version there was not vetiver or patchouli um now the 2018 version did have grass and mint in the top so maybe that's where the green notes come from i, I couldn't tell you right now but yeah so it does it's i mean it's called undergrowth when i when i heard or i saw the name of this fragrance um, I had a feeling it was going to be like some very green and earthy and just reminds me of a forest. So I'm going to picture this being very green and foresty and earthy, maybe wet soil. It has the soil tincture. This is definitely going to be uh niche perfumery, probably at its finest here. You know, um, a lot of some niche perfumes out there are just so realistic or just so out there that, uh, some people love them because they're, they're considered art. Um, but some people hate them because they're not very wearable. So we'll see, we'll see where this one uh, falls in line. So let's give us, uh, this fragrance a first impression. All right, here we go. Clean hand, pop the cap. Nice black atomizer there. Clean hand, here we go. Decent spray. Okay. Yeah. Definitely getting the citrus notes, very sharp. I'm getting the vetiver is very sharp. I'm getting the green notes. I'm getting the mint. That soil note, this this does smell like wet uh, forest floor, but not in a bad way. It smells really nice. I get the, I get the realistic mint note. I'm getting the green grassy note. So imagine getting like some grass and ripping it up and then smelling it. Definitely getting all that green grassy notes from this. The soil note in there is isn't like super bad. It's sort of dry almost like dry and like earthy and like um so almost minerally sort of yeah uh the vetiver the vetiver's in there it's got a little bit of like uh the uh, earthy terror mess thing going but just slightly not even enough to to say it reminds me of that fragrance but uh definitely understand why this one was um why i thought it was going to be like i mean i understand the undergrowth name uh, from what i'm getting this is definitely niche perfumery, but this isn't bad. It smells like you, it could be wearable. We'll see where it goes, but yeah, the mint note is very prominent in this fragrance. So it's very cooling to my nose. Yeah, whenever I'm smelling this, I'm definitely picturing wild mint growing on a forest floor, like a, uh, like a uh, moist, um, earthy forest floor. But yeah. If you like mint fragrances with some earthy notes in there, you're going to like this fragrance. 
But right now it's sort of teetering between too niche and wearable. And I, I believe this, this can be wearable right now anyway. But it smells nice and I want to say that someone compared this one to a imaginary author's fragrance, maybe mint julep. I, I'll have, I'll put the picture here of what um, that one smells like. And if it is that one, I have tried that one before. But I don't think it reminds me of this one too much. It's been a while since I've tried that fragrance, but... But yeah, yeah, not a bad fragrance. I mean, um, I'll have to put, I'll put the price right here. This is a, I believe a 50 mil bottle, but I'll put the price and I'll let you guys know if it's worth it in the update. But without making this video too much longer, uh, I'm going to wear this fragrance uh, today. It is hot outside. I think it should do well with that mint note in the, in the, in the, um, the mandarin orange. It should do okay in the heat. And we'll see where this fragrance goes. Uh, so I'm going to wear this fragrance today and over the next few days. Give you guys some day shortly. Talk to you then. Hey, what's up, guys? Just want to bring you guys a quick update on the undergrowth from the House of Rook perfumes. So, what can I say about this fragrance? Um, I'm going to start by saying it's not for everyone. It does start off with a nice, very uh, natural smelling mint. Um, and it also goes into this nice, uh, well, I think it's nice, but some noses might not like the soil tincture. So, it does smell like, it smells like dirt. It smells like earth. I got a lot of green notes out of this. So the mint on top, the grass note, the soil note. Um, there's also some mandarin in this. I don't get a lot of citrus in this. It, it gives it a little bit of freshness, but mostly I get uh, the notes that I just mentioned and then the vetiver and patchouli. It's a very green, very mature fragrance. Mature as in like the dry down goes into mostly patchouli and vetiver. If you guys aren't fans of patchouli, you're not going to like this fragrance. If you guys aren't fans of vetiver, you're not going to like this fragrance. Now, what it does do is it definitely gives you a, a sense of the name, undergrowth. So I'm picturing um, a forest with natural growing mint uh, with sticks and leaves and grass growing. I get the moist, uh, wet earth, the soil uh, under your feet. This is very... This is niche perfumery. This is art in a bottle, if you will. But it's wearable. Um, if you like those notes, you have to like a lot of patchouli. You have to like the earthy notes, basically, and, and green notes. It's, this is a very earthy, uh, green fragrance that does remind you of your natural surroundings. So if you like that, you're going to like this fragrance. Longevity I got out of this wasn't the greatest. Um, I'm going to say six hours to be safe. It could go longer than that in the dry down, but... To be safe, I'm going to say six hours, which will factor the price here in a, in a second. I'll get to that in a second. But like, you know, that's not bad for this fragrance, um, but it could have been better because this is a niche fragrance. It does cost over $100, so I would like this one to last eight hours. And maybe on your skin it might, but on mine it was like six, you know, it was really getting really close to the skin by the sixth hour. Uh, the projection was moderate. Uh, again, we're, we'll get to the more on that in the seasons, but... Um, you're going to need some warmer weather to really help this one jump. Um, and again, honestly, maybe it might be best that it, it doesn't fill up a room and it isn't super strong because I, I just don't know how, you know, if, if this is really booming off you, how people are going to going to really um, think of what people are going to think about these notes. I mean, because, you know, if you get too much patchouli, someone's going to think you smell like a hippie. If you get too much vetiver, someone's just going to think you smell like earth, like earthy, and they're not really going to know what's going on. Um, so I, I think this, this fragrance does work best in a moderate projection scenario. So, you know, that's just my, uh, thoughts on that. But so seasons for this fragrance, I'm going to say are going to be spring and fall. Um, just sort of pretty much when it's a good mix between warm, warm weather and cooler weather. Um, cause this fragrance does give you a, uh, good idea of, you know, just being like sort of in, um, in the woods. And so I, I just do, I just picture, not, not so much hot weather, but just more cooler to warm weather with this fragrance. I do think that the hot weather might help the performance on this one. Um, but then again, you might not really want this one really cooking up on your skin too much. So, um, But yeah, I definitely think the cooler months and the to, cooler to warmer months of the year are perfect for this fragrance. Occasions. Casual wear for this fragrance is going to be best. Um, it's just casual day wear. I don't think this is going to be good at night. This isn't like a sexy fragrance. This isn't like a gentlemanly fragrance. Uh, in a sense to where you know, wear, wear this one with a suit and tie. Maybe you'll like that patchouli. Maybe you'll like that vetiver. So possibly. But just to, in, in my opinion, I think this one is a casual day fragrance. Overall, 
like the fragrance. This reminds me of something that um, imaginary authors would put out. Something that is more a, um, you know, he would put a picture of like a tree and like mint leaves and this and that, you know. You know how, how uh, imaginary authors work with their fragrances. Um, but this is more like that. Is this wearable? It, it's wearable. The opening is definitely my favorite part. The, the fresh mint, the grass, a little bit of that mandarin, and the um, just the green notes all together are going to be what, what really catches your attention with this fragrance. When it goes to the dry down, I'm a little bit like, eh, you know, it's not really my favorite. It's very earthy, very dry, very vetiver, very patchouli heavy. You know, if you like those notes, you're, you're going to like this fragrance. Now, this is a niche perfume. This is a unisex. So... I feel this one leans more towards um, the men, just because it has the patchouli and the vetiver and the earthy notes. I think this is going to be way leaning more masculine, uh, in my opinion. Price value for this fragrance is going to be, it's it's okay. It's $135 for 50 ml. I have, wasn't able to find this one discounted anywhere. Uh, it is an niche house, so they're probably selling for full retail. 50 ml bottle for $135 is not the worst price I've ever seen for a niche fragrance. Personally, would I pay $135 for this? No, I got this in a swap. I would not pay 135 for this. I would pay, this is part, to my opinion, this is worth like 85 bucks, in my opinion. Um, I like this fragrance. I definitely say sample this fragrance. Um, it's not going to be a crowd pleaser. It's not going to be, it's going to be more, it's going to be more for you because you like it. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about it. This isn't going to be a crowd pleaser. And if it is, that's great. But in my, in my experience, it wasn't much of a crowd pleaser. It wasn't turning people off, but it just wasn't like the best thing. You know, I wasn't getting really, positive feedback from this one uh either so um but yeah i think you should try you should sample this fragrance if you really want to try one something from this house rook perfumes um also just try niche perfumery this is definitely niche perfumery at its finest not saying it's my best or favorite niche perfume but this is art in a bottle so if you want to just get the experience of a forest of being a out in the woods and you you know the, the the fresh mint and the vetiver and the trees and the soil then you're gonna want to try this fragrance if that doesn't sound something you're gonna like then just stay away from this one because you're not gonna like it um but it's not that bad guys so have you guys tried um undergrowth from the house of rook perfumes if you have let me know your thoughts on this fragrance down in the comments below because i'd love to hear your thoughts on this one and let me know um if if um, our ideas match up or if not and that's okay either way uh, but thank you guys so much for watching the video on my channel if you like this video please click that like button Subscribe to my channel and toss notifications for future first impressions videos and first set of content just like this, guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, dollars and cents. There, you'll find fragrance related photos and future contest winners. And as always, until next video, you guys take care. Thanks.